Hello, this is Jay. Welcome to my channel. I thought I'd just give you a short report. I'm actually out on the road again. I left last week, Tuesday, so this is my seventh day on the road. Most of the time, I've just been sitting around just kind of trying to stay cool. It's been very hot. I'm in southwestern South Dakota right now, right by Wyoming in the Black Hills National Forest. And uh, it's just been really hot lately, so I've been trying to not cook inside, and I haven't done anything with uh, electronics really, just because it's too hot inside the car. So the very first day, I actually went somewhere in Iowa, and a lot of spots that are free camping around there, they're usually like little recreation sites or wildlife areas, and they're really small, and they're surrounded by, not residential, but farmlands and buildings. It's kind of weird. So the first night, didn't sleep the best, but the second night, I actually got out to Badlands, and I stayed at the Buffalo Gap Grasslands, I believe, and it was beautiful. And... Thanks to everybody at work when I quit my job back in 2018. They actually uh, collected a bunch of money to give me to buy a drone. And uh, I had that money and I looked at drones and I was really torn on which one to get over and over. And I really liked the Mavic Air because of its small size, but it was just so noisy. It's just the high pitch. And then the Mini came out and one of the things I really wanted in a drone was something that could follow me automatically and the Mini didn't have that feature, so couldn't get that. So I waited longer. I wanted the Mavic 2, but it was just too big and way too expensive. It comes about $1,500. So I waited and waited, and then finally the Mavic Air 2 came out, which was about 800 for just the drone, or 700 just for the drone, and then you have to pay more for the Fly More combo, which includes more batteries. So I got that. And I've been really happy with it. It's, uh, it's a lot cheaper in the Mavic 2 Pro. And it's, uh, it's, not as, it's not a lot smaller. It's a little smaller, but the controller size is so much bigger that it pretty much comes out even. It's a lot lighter, though, and the batteries are lighter. So I'm, I'm really happy with it. Um, I did wish it had, like, sideways obstacle avoidance. Because it's really nice when it kind of parallels you. So when you're walking, it flies next to you. But it'll just crash right into something if uh, something's in the way. So that's not the best. But thanks, everybody at work, for contributing for the drone. I uh, appreciate it so much. And I finally got it. I'm going to try to fly as much as I can. The last campsite I was at, I, was, I wanted to fly because I thought it would be really interesting. But there were a lot of low-flying helicopters. I believe there was an airport legal distance away for me to fly it but they must have been teaching people how to fly helicopters because they would come loop and go right back so i think they were just flying low um, so i didn't want to fly a drone there because they were really low and i'd have to keep it real low to even be safe so and i didn't want them to get off an alarm that like oh there's a drone right here and then cause some kind of scene but there hasn't been anything flying here at all so i flew the drone here there's not much to see really but it's nice getting an aerial view of how everything is and how the car is and just kind of seeing what things are like. And then I actually didn't drive down this one road, so it was nice just flying over to see the conditions of that. So I thought it maybe be good to scope out campsites, but legally you're supposed to keep it with an eyesight so you can't have it too far away. So there's that. But yes, I'm back in the road. Um, I'm going to head out to Devil's Tower in a couple days here or tomorrow. Uh, well, I'm going to go get closer to there, and then Wednesday I'm going to go hike around it. So that's cool, and if you've seen Close Encounters of the Third Kind, of course, Devil's Tower, you have to go. It's a national monument, so there won't be any drone flying there. I've been mulling over the idea that legally you could stay outside of it, fly the drone, and you fly in and around a little and come back, but eh, I probably shouldn't do that, so I'm not going to do that. But... um yeah, so the adventure's back on. Recently, I've been uploading 360 videos. I don't have too many of those, so I'm not going to do a lot. The ones I uploaded are pretty much all that I'll have up. But I thought I would just upload them as is because the cool thing about 360 is when there's a unique environment, you could just point your cameras everywhere. I know some people, maybe they were watching it on a TV or something where you can't change views. And the camera by default seems to have a slight turn over time. And they're saying it's kind of boring that it's turning but if you get that try to watch it on a phone or on a computer and then with the computer click into the video and then drag it around and you can point it to wherever you want to point to and it's kind of nice because 
you can point to wherever you want. And especially on Forester Pass, when you go up, it's really steep side and it's just a series of switchbacks. And it's cool looking down how you could see all the trail down below. And as well as that whole valley, knowing that you hike down that valley or up that valley to get to where you are. It's quite interesting. So kind of try to use your phone if it's not working out for you because that's the best because you can just turn it and it actually works really well. Or you could move your move it with your finger as well, but uh, I'm not gonna be doing a lot of that, so unless you want me to, but really, unless there's something that it would provide a lot as far as the different views, I won't be recording it, just because like walking through the woods, it's not gonna be as fun or interesting. As far as 360, it's kind of, point of view is probably nicer or maybe some above but I'll upload some more 360 if where I'm going warrants that that would be a huge benefit to people to watch maybe they would really enjoy it there's also another tool I got for the Osmo pocket it's it's a weird right angle thing with the spring it's supposed to absorb the bounce you get when you walk and sometimes when you're walking unless you go real slow it's hard to avoid that bounce and if you go too slowly, it's actually exerts a lot of energy and there's still a little bit. So I'm hoping to try that out. So hopefully I can get some footage of you of me walking down the trail with no, none of that bounce and maybe be a lot smoother. I've seen even with like GoPros with their great uh, video stabilization, there's still a bounce because you just can't get rid of that with software at all. So I'm going to test that out. Hopefully it works out okay for you and... I'll keep using a lav mic for the Osmo Pocket as well because its, it's built-in mic is not very good, especially when it's windy at all. And that, I will also take my drone with me on whatever hikes I go to if I am legally allowed to fly it. So hopefully I can get some good footage. I know wildlife or wilder I know wilderness areas are banned outright, so hopefully I can get some good hikes in and National Forest and BLM where I can fly it and maybe get some good mountain views. I know last year when I did Saddle Mountain, it would have been perfect for a drone just because it was just the highest point in all the land around it and it was BLM. So I could have flown it, I could have made huge circles and it would have been beautiful. And I don't know, I'd like to see that. I haven't seen myself on top of a mountain, so I think it'd be really cool. I know. I met some people, at least one person in 2018 when I did the PCT. He had a Mavic Air as well, the original version. And he showed me some footage and they were in wilderness areas. I just, I don't know. I'll never do that. Um, if you see me flying in a wilderness area, feel free to unsubscribe because I don't deserve it. Okay. So, all right. I forgot there's a few more things I want to say. Uh, a few weeks ago, I actually gave myself a haircut and it wasn't as bad as I thought. I watched a bunch of videos before and that was a plan to do it last year was give myself haircuts. So I tried it out and it actually turned out okay. It's been a, well, I got hat head now, but I actually used the clippers and then used scissors to cut the top and it actually came out uh, better than some haircuts I've gotten. But I think if anybody looked closely at it, you can tell I cut my own hair and there's a part there. I don't even know what to do. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever figure it out. I don't think even like air, real barbers have figured it out, but it's pretty funny. I'm gonna cut my hair some more, but uh, yeah, that's what I've been up to. I'll just keep wearing this though. <laughs> Another thing additional about the Buffalo Gap grasslands along the cliffside camping is it's a super beautiful spot and you get beautiful views and the sunrise is beautiful. It comes, it comes out the east along the bottom and it's just clear and if there's some clouds, you see the sun just coming right up on the horizon. You could stare at it. Beautiful. The only catch is if you don't have some way of privacy, you can't really go to the bathroom. Um, people can see each other. There's nothing in the way. It's relatively flat. The only thing that can give you shelter is your car. So if you're going to go number one or number two, you're going to have to do it right next to your car or do it like I did. I found a spot at the very end that was down that none of those huge RVs can get to obviously. So from there I can actually go down a little and then go pee in one of the ravines. But then other people moved in closer and uh, well then I just didn't care anymore. But places like that you really need some way of having to 
go to the bathroom indoors or you can only stay there for one day or as long as you can hold it so i was only there one night and i took off i was hoping to go back there again once it cooled down enough but it just hasn't cooled down enough so i kind of went north maybe i'll go back there someday but for now can't do it and um, the bit of advice also is further south um, there are a lot of RVs and there are a lot of spots and the spots are relatively relatively close together but all the RVs just kind of will merge together to get closer and closer as you go further north there are actual nice curve like pullouts here and there so you get more distance between vehicles you still don't have as much privacy some spots you can it juts out more so if you're behind next to your car you can kind of get the privacy but most of the spots people will be able to see you in the daytime and there'll be people driving up and down the road the northern end of that whole area the road is a little rougher than the southern end so if you don't have a four-wheel drive or have something that's real low clearance I recommend going into it from the southern end and then drive up going around the north there's some big ditches as well as a steep climb you have to go up um, I'm sure some RV people will try it um, they'll probably make it too but you know word of caution but uh, yeah if you have the time you should definitely go by there someday it's a pretty sweet spot I'm not exactly sure where I'll go after Devil's Tower I might go further north and go to North Dakota and visit the Theodore Roosevelt National Park uh, Tina looked up some pictures and she thought it looked a lot like canyons and cliff edges so I thought it might be pretty cool worth going I haven't been there yet before I didn't even know about it till a few months ago really but yeah I might go there um, just because it's cooler further up north I might drive west into Montana then and kind of explore around I'm not quite sure yet so I don't know um, part of the reason I stayed at home a little longer was I've actually been waiting for uh, a folding kayak to come but it still hasn't come so I'm glad I left because otherwise I would have waited another week for nothing it's that Tuck Tech kayak I did a Kickstarter for. Kind of delayed, but I guess with things going on, it's reasonable. So, but uh, so no kayak trips this time around. And the biggest challenge I think for me on this trip is the gyms are still closed. And if they open, the trend has been that they don't open up the showers. So it's been a little more tricky. I've been I gave myself a, like a little washcloth bath, but that's just not the best. And you also need, uh, or at least I feel I need a more private site to just get in my underwear <laughs> and clean myself off. Uh, here, I probably won't do it just because there's a road and there's a lot of off-roaders coming by. But uh, I don't know, there's a lot of things going on. I like to go places where I could fly the drone more. So I'd like to go higher in the mountain just to stay cooler as well. So. We'll see what happens um, mixing that in with Wyoming, Southern Montana. We'll see. But thanks for watching. I'm going to just show you some of the drone footage I took recently of my campsites at Badlands along the cliff there into the Badlands, as well as some random ones and then here. So hope you appreciate it. I'm still learning, so I'm still learning not to like fly and then jerk it because I'm, I'm not happy with the way it's pointing so and I keep recording it and I forget it's recording and I'm doing silly things Ugh, waste but stay tuned to this channel for more stuff and I uh, hope everyone is doing well and I will talk to everyone later bye so I just happened to come across this rest stop randomly stopped here and there's a statue and I saw this statue on some website. I saw an ad for it. So it's pretty crazy. I got super lucky because I had no idea where this thing was located. I didn't even bother trying to look for it, but I thought, oh yeah, it'd be cool to go there. And here I am. It's some rest stop. I'll give you coordinates for where I am, but it's huge. It's so windy right now though. I don't know. I don't know if I should fly the drone or not.